Hello, friends. Welcome to the Ancient Health Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Motley, and today we have a very special guest who has created an awesome supplement company that is based on scientific research, and we're really glad that Tina Anderson is here from Just Thrive because it is one of the products that I've seen not only help individuals in my clinic right here in the, in the office, but it's also brought them hope because you can tell that there's a change literally on their outlook in life, literally with their brain activity. So I just want to say thank you, Tina, for joining us today, and we're going to have a great time. Well, thanks for having me, Dr. Motley. I'm so excited to be here. Well, okay, everybody out there, you know that one of my first things that I love to do is talk about the guest, and I like to find out more about them because I was reading on your bio that you were and are a lawyer and that you were trying to, uh, I guess, were you, I'll say tired of your career, but could you give us a little backdrop about being in law and then you coming and starting a supplement company and going out there to change lives? Sure. Yeah, I started my career in litigation and I was doing that, working crazy hours, um, not feeling particularly satisfied in my career. And then I started having children and I wanted mm. to have a little bit more time with them. And so I was fortunate to be able to leave the litigation field and go into a pharmaceutical into a pharmaceutical business where I was general counsel, kind of in a part-time capacity. So I was able to be home with my kids a little bit more and, um, and then I yet be able to practice law, which was, you know, kind of fun. And I enjoyed that more. I enjoyed the corporate side of things way more. So um, I was in the pharmaceutical industry as well as my husband was too. And after being in that industry for a while, we started to see a lot of the abuses. And, you know, it was interesting because my parents are both immigrants. They came here from Eastern Europe, um, you know, when hmm. they were 15, when they were teenagers and they were very naturally minded. You know, my mom, oh, my mom breastfed when it wasn't like popular to breastfeed. And I just was, we just always were kind of natural. And then when we started having kids, we were kind of the same way. And, mm -hmm. and we start, started to realize like there were so many abuses in the pharmaceutical industry that we were seeing with our own eyes. You know, we were seeing pharmaceutical reps come in and like, you know, try to tell a doctor in a hospital system to start prescribing a medication when it wasn't necessarily necessary. They were like lowering mm. the benchmark of when they would prescribe a medication. And so, you know, my husband and I were like, we read a lot of Wayne Dyer, um, where we work on mindset quite a bit. We are very deep thinkers. And Wayne Dyer's message has always been to do your life's work. And we just felt we weren't doing our life's work. And so we kind of dove into the natural health space because that meant something to us. It was, like I said, the way we already were living our lives with our three mm. children. And um, through a lot of prayer, a lot of meditation, a lot of being at the right place at the right time, we were able to license these very exclusive strains of probiotics out of London University um, from Dr. Simon Cutting, world-renowned researcher. It was We were disruptors in the market. We brought something that nobody had ever brought to the retail market. It wasn't just a probiotic. And mm. we brought these particularly this, these particular bacillus strains to the market. And, and that's based on all that is where Just Thrive was born. And it was, you know, it's been the most gratifying career journey I have ever been on. Um, it's so much fun to change lives every day. Like, like you see what you're doing, Dr. Motley, but it's like, it never gets old, you know, in those beginning days yeah. when it was so hard starting the business and, you know, I'm like, why am I doing this? I can't do this. I have three kids. We're all running around and, but, oh my gosh, it has been so awesome to make people feel better. I love this because when you, when you find that you've discovered something that you know can actually help people, do you? F I, I know you feel this way like I do too. It's like you want to make sure that everybody can hear about it and you want to try to experience. Like if I go to a seminar at times and I learn some brand new like technique, um, I always give myself the rule like you're going to go back and you need to try to practice that on per somebody on Monday. And when you start to see how it can actually affect people's lives, like putting into action, you know that that's what your calling was. and we can see that though with um, how it is in our world today because there's a lot of companies out there, Tina, that I hate to say it, but you can tell that they probably really have not been backed by research or backed out by science. And can you talk a bit more about this strain of probiotic that you found from your research from University of London? What kind of uh, benefits does this particular strain have? 
Yes. Yeah, so this is called a bacillus spore based bacteria. So bacillus spores have this endospore shell around themselves. Mm -hmm. And that shell, it's not anything that we've enterocoded. This spore shell around themselves allows it to be a very hardy organism. Mm -hmm. Just by definition, really probiotics in general are very sensitive organisms. You know, mm -hmm. most you'll see in the refrigerator and, you know, at the grocery store. And it's like, when you think about it, if a probiotic has to be in the refrigerator, you know, because it can't withstand the room temperature of the store, the store shelf, how in the world would it survive your body temperature, which is much warmer than the store shelf, which is 98.6. So, and the answer is they really aren't. So the majority of probiotics really are having difficulty surviving the gastric system and getting into the intestines. So mm -hmm. the spores have this endospore shell around itself that protects it. And these are the same type of strains that our ancestors used to find. You know, our ancestors would be eating roots and tubers off mm -hmm. the land and on the soil, they would get these bacillus spores from the soil. And then you would consume them. Our ancestors used to consume them on a regular basis. And they would get these bacillus strains. And this is why digestive problems were really non-existent back then. And, and why if you go to a tribe in Tanzania or you go to some of these tribes that are just untouched and their soil is so clean, they, mm. they would also be getting these bacillus strains from the soil and from the land that they're eating off. But we obviously, our soil is so depleted and it's, mm. you know, deplete of all the nutrients. It's so contaminated and it's not, we're not getting those same bacillus strains. And so the unique thing about these bacillus strains is that, like I said, they have this hardy shell around themselves that allows it to survive that journey from when you swallow it, go mm. through your, the body temperature, it hits the stomach acid, which is very acidic. The stomach is meant to be the gastric barrier and it allows it to get through that stomach acid completely intact. And when it hits the intestines, it takes its endospore shell off and that's when it becomes alive. That's when these wow. strains become alive, when it hits the intestines. And then the spores, unlike the majority of probiotics you'll find out there, actually stay there, stay in the intestines for about 21 to 28 days where they're making a true change in that intestinal tract and the gut flora where most probiotics would just like pass through similar to food. These actually stay there for about 21 to 28 days. And it's truly why we see such profound results because we're actually changing the makeup of the microflora mm. to the microbiome so that you have more diversity and you have a much healthier microbiome. That's what to me, it's just amazing. Like the innate uh, intelligence of the body, how it can work on symbiosis with yeah. microorganisms. And when that bacillus spore gets there and pulls off its shell I, I've heard uh, one of my mentors would tell me, he says, like, re-inoculation, right? Like, if it's in there, it can stay there for a long time because I think that's what makes Just Thrive so unique is because it is a strand that can stay in there and keep growing and help change the terrain. Mm -hmm. Do you find – I want you to, if you could help me, because my brain sometimes when I think about like something like uh, basically re-inoculating or growing in the gut. One of my friends said, think about your gut having uh, one, the army and then, but that army has to go off and help fight off an infection. But what if your body needs the Navy? And so there's like, you know, you have to have different strands or different types. And I thought that was a really, you know, cool analogy. Um, are you finding that with Just Thrive, like with this bacillus as it opens up, does it kind of order and change the other bacteria or do you find that it's like it's shifting things for that particular person? Yes, exactly. You hit the nail on the head because what it's doing is it's reading the microbial environment. It, has, mm. it does something called quorum sensing. So wow. it's reading the microbial environment in your intestines. And the mm. best, most elementary way to explain what it does is if you compare your intestines with a garden and inside that garden is like overgrown with weeds. It has plants that are good, but they're stepped on and trampled on and they're not flourishing in the garden. And so you kind of compare that to your gut where you have weeds that are growing, you know, outgrowing and, and overtaking kind of the good bacteria in your gut. So what the spores do, the bacillus spores do is they go into that garden and they, you throw those 
in the, you know, the, the strains in the garden and they don't die in the stomach acid, you know, so they're, mm. they don't die. They get there into that garden a hundred percent alive. They have the ability to attach the soil in the garden. And then they have the ability to help get rid of that overgrowth of the weeds in the garden mm. and have the ability to take those plants that have been stepped on and trampled on and help them come back to life, if you will. So if you compare that to your gut, these strains go in there, they're quorum sensing, they're helping that overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria not be so overgrown. You know, I mean, we could have mm. some pathogenic bacteria. It's That's a normal part of the ecosystem. You just want the beneficial bacteria to outweigh the pathogenic bacteria. And so that's what these strains do. They're actually helping create diversity in the gut because they're taking your own bacteria that already belongs to you and helping it, you know, thrive and come back to life. And so it's really such an effective way to change your gut makeup and and make a change. One of the first studies we did was something called a gut model study. And mm. again, I've never really heard of any other probiotic company doing this type of study. And mm. just after two and a half weeks, it showed a 30% favorable shift in the microbiome in that population in the gut. Just after two and a half weeks, a 30% favorable shift. I mean, that's a profound change in such a short amount of time. Uh, I think that when you talked about the change and the quorum sensing, uh, I th I think that the public probably does not have an idea of how profound probiotics are. Like, and when you say it can shift um, our gut flora, now this, I'm not trying to get a rabbit trail though, Tina. I'm just asking, mm -hmm. like, when it changes our gut microbiome, if there's a sensing between your, you know, you know, gut microbes with the other microbes, can the way our digestive system is inoculated with good probiotics or bad, can it change the way we think? Can not only is that biome in there changing, you know, the way we like have our digestive bowel movements or how we process foods. I guess what I'm asking is what are some of like the basic benefits that a probiotic, a good probiotic in your gut does for your body? Like, does it change, you know, your thinking? Does it change how you digest food because a lot of people there's a lot of myths out there about like what actually goes on with probiotics they just think that i'm going to take this and that's it um what are some of the best best benefits that you have seen with probiotics Yes. Well, I think so many people come to a probiotic because they have digestive issues. They see mm. gas or bloating or, you know, diarrhea or constipation. You know, people are like, oh, I need a probiotic because I have gut issues or I have digestive issues. And those are certainly reasons why you want to take it. And you start to see less bloating, more regular bowel movements, more he healthier bowel movements, mm. not like loose stools mm. or hard pellets. I mean, just healthier bowel movements is, you know, we see that all the time and just being more regular. But you hit on something really important important is the you know brain and the gut are they connected and mm -hmm. they absolutely are connected and we know mm -hmm. this and we know that how we think is directed by our gut microbiome we know that our neurotransmitters are being produced in our gut so you know 90% um, of our serotonin which is our happy hormone is produced in our gut mm -hmm. dopamine is produced in our gut GABA which is our calming hormone is produced in our gut so all these critical neurotransmitters are most of them are being created in our gut, not in our brain. And so our gut is sending those signals back up to the brain. Mm. And then the brain also sends signals back down to the gut. So there's something called the vagus nerve, which I'm sure so many of your listeners mm. are very educated mm. and they already know about this, but the vagus nerve is one of the largest nerves in the body that connects from your brain stem down to your intestines. And there's a communication going back and forth to, from your gut to your brain and your brain to your gut. And, and it, it makes so much sense. You know, when you think about when you're excited about something, what happens you get butterflies in your stomach mm, and yeah. and it, that's that's that communication between your gut and your brain so absolutely you know when people are stressed out or people have mood issues i'm always telling them like you need to take care of your gut and and the opposite is true when people are trying to take care of their gut i say meditate do things that calm you down because the brain will be sending signals down to the gut mm, i love this because we're finding out like just from this like how much it would affect our mentality now Another thing too is like with the bacillus, right? And there's some people that will say like, um, I've heard of this, but I've also heard of things like lactobacillus, or I've heard of other strands um, with Just Thrive. Is there a, a big difference like by using the, you know, the products in your uh, probiotic or is what are some of the key differences? Like if you use this probiotic to somebody else's? 
Yeah. Well, the majority of probiotics that you find in the market are made up of lactobacillus or bifidobacterium. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to that garden analogy, if you throw those strains into the garden, Mm -hmm. those strains, probably most of them won't even get there because the gastric system would kill it. You know, the gastric system, our gut is met or our stomach has, is so acidic. If we touched our, you know, the acidic environment in our stomach, it would burn our finger. So mm-hmm. most of those lactobacillus bifidobacterium strains would die and they never would make it to the garden. But let's say by some chance they did, they made it to the garden. They may plant a new plant in that garden. So maybe mm-hmm. make it look a little bit prettier, but mm-hmm. they're not doing anything with those plants that have been stepped on and trampled on. Whereas the bacillus strains actually will help we have them come back to life. They won't do anything to those weeds in the garden. They're not getting rid of the weeds in the garden. They're just maybe Mm -hmm. planting a new plant here and there. So people will say, oh, I did feel a little bit of benefit from it. And you might feel some symptomatic relief. But what the spores are doing and just thrive, the bacillus spores, they're actually going in and making a true change in that garden and helping create diversity. You know, the biggest key to a healthy microbiome is a diverse microbiome. And that's what the spores do is they help create that diversity. That's a a great way to put it. Like you say, the spores are changing like the weeds or pulling out the weeds. So my next thought would be with that analogy, which is awesome. That would be like the weeds and the dirt being like the layers of the gut. So that in its own way could be like helping the gut lining heal. So you would prevent things like leaky gut, right? Because that's a big subject matter. Is that what happens with the spore producing bacteria? Yes. In fact, that was another study. You know, we saw so many of the abuses in the pharmaceutical industry, but -hmm. unfortunately we knew that there are abuses in the, you know, supplement space too. And so we were very, very committed to when we came to market was to bring studies, double blind Mm -hmm. human clinical trials, which is unheard of in the supplement space. And so one of the first double blind human clinical trials was done on these these exact bacillus strains. So bacillus Mm -hmm. subtilis HU58, bacillus indicus HU36, bacillus clausi, bacillus um, subtilis. So we have, we have this double blind human clinical trial on these strains from London University. And this leaky gut study actually showed that these strains help seal up the leakiness of the gut. So it's, it's, a, it's a crazy study. I mean, it's a study of, you know, beyond, I, I don't know of any other probiotic, any other pharmaceutical company that has a study of this magnitude showing that it's actually sealing up those tight junctions that make up the leaky gut. And we know in the way, the way we tested this is we tested the LPS toxins. So LPS toxins stand for LPS or stand for lipopolysaccharides. Oh. And we know that a lipopolysaccharide toxins aren't really all that problematic in the gut. It's when they seep into the bloodstream or Mm -hmm. when food particles seep into the bloodstream, it becomes very problematic. Our immune system recognizes it as a threat and we start this chronic inflammation. Well, the majority of adults out there are walking around with some form of leaky gut. And, you know, they estimate that 80 to 90% of the adult population has a leaky gut and doesn't know it. And so the study that we did was actually crazy because it showed us that after 30 days, Mm -hmm. Um, the treated group actually saw a 42% reduction in um, LPS toxins seeping into the bloodstream. But here's the scary part. The placebo group, so the the group that wasn't being treated, saw a 32% increase in LPS going into the bloodstream. What that's telling us, it's like this leaky faucet. And so people will say like, I never had allergies before, or I never had an autoimmune issue before, or I never had anxiety and depression before, or I never had, you know, whatever it might be. And it's, you really have had this leaky gut for a while and you just didn't know it. In fact, the study was done on healthy college students. These were college students who had no health issues. They weren't on any medication, nothing. They were healthy as they thought could be, but they had this leakiness of the gut, which was causing this chronic inflammation. When you have leaky, if you have LPS toxins leaping, leaking into your bloodstream and seeping into your bloodstream, you start to have this chronic inflammation and it, it causes, you know, we know it's the source of so many diseases out there. Are you seeing like, I love when you talk about double blind studies. I mean, to me, it's like one of the best type of information that you get. What about this whole thing of like just throwing a whole bunch of probiotics on there? You just said it like, you know, some individuals could say like, oh, all right, um, we've got um, SIBO that that is basically inflamed by just throwing a lot of probiotics. Can you talk a bit about that? Like sometimes the individual will get like a a probiotic and they'll just have 
tons of strains in them. And, mm. and they just say, well, I'm just going to take a whole bunch of this. And they start to have like bloating and they'll have lots of gas. Is that what's happening when you're talking about that? Like they're just sort of adding fuel to the fire if they're not careful? Yeah. Well, one of my, I mean, pet peeves really are these kitchen sink type formulas of probiotics that you see mm. out there. You know, you see these probiotics with 15 different strains. And there was a study done by UC Davis that actually showed that uh, they tested 16 different probiotics off the shelves mm -hmm. and only 15, I mean, only one of them out of 16 met label claims. The other wow. 15 didn't meet the, they didn't have the same strains that were listed on the label. And let me just briefly explain why this happens, because what happens is the way you grow probiotics is you put them in a vat. And so mm. what these companies are doing are taking 15 different strains, throwing them together in a vat and growing them together. We do not do that. We grow each of our strains in their own vat and so that they don't mix with each other. Because what happens is when they're all in one vat, two strains could come together and one could kill off another one. So one that was listed on the label is not in the product itself, but even worse, two strains could come together and create a whole new strain that's not studied what? for safety or efficacy. Yeah, it's crazy. So I am so adamant about like these kitchen, because you know, in America, more is better. You know, yeah, if you yes, have 15 yes. different strains and you have 50 billion or 100 billion CFU, those are some of the biggest myths out there. You know, you don't, the, like we only have 3 billion CFUs and four strains. And look at our product showed a 30% shift in just two and a half weeks. I mean, that's what you want to look at. You don't want to, you don't want to be focused on, I, oh, this one has 10 strains. This one has 15 strains. This one has 100 billion CFUs or 50 billion CFUs or 250 billion CFUs. That is really just marketing and there's no science behind it. Having more is not better. It's just that most companies know the probiotic strains are dying by the time they ever get to the intestines. And so it's, oh. it, I do caution people about taking probiotics that have, you know, 15 different strains or 10 different strains. And the Weissman Institute did a study recently. And they published a study that showed that basically that these kitchen sink type formulas are actually competing with your own natural gut flora and, and they could almost be dangerous. And so, and especially after a course of antibiotics. So um, I'm, I'm very adamant that you, you know, you want to take probiotic strains that are studied and not just studied individual. A lot of companies will take one strain that's been studied and mix it with another strain that hasn't been studied. That's what's so unique about ours. It's, it's our finished formulation that's been studied. So we know how these strains work together oh i my okay i love when i get those nuggets oh, everything's a nugget here tina i'm just saying but those nuggets about how one if they're grown separately and that makes sense though like when things are if they're put together they could actually create a new you know like a new combination because one of the things like when i'm working here at the office uh, a few of my mentors always told us it's, it's right down your alley. It's like, they say you want to make sure like if you had, let's say an herbal and it had like seriously 15 di different herbs, if a person didn't react well to it, I don't know which one of those herbs they did not react well to. Right. And the beautiful thing is like you studied it, like these single herbs, we, I mean, these single strands have done this benefit. So we know that they're going to have that effectiveness. So you can get a good uh, idea because I'd love how you put that. Uh, and I a hundred percent back it. When you talk about when ratios are in the right amounts, when they have the right ratios, you will have a profound effect. That's why like when you talk about adding more and more, I find even here that if I put the right herbs, the right ratios, because in my mind, that's the right frequency. And people think it sounds really hoo -hoo, woo woo, but it's a frequency. It's, it's basically a resonance within that ratio and that amount mm -hmm. that makes the biggest profound change for the person. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love that when you're talking about it's quantity, not, I mean, it's quality, not quantity. And yeah. that's one thing I'm really impressed with because the, the testimonials you have mm -hmm. in your products have shown that. So, what are, I get basically, I don't say health hacks. I'd say like, what are your favorite things about probiotics that everybody out there should know? I know we've talked a lot about them, but I guess this is my question too. 
what are the best benefits that a person would notice about their uh, their mood? That's the one thing because that anxiety is huge this day and age. Yeah, I know it's it's awful. We actually launched a, a psychobiotic, which we could talk about if you want to later. But yes, um, yes. But just because it is so, I, what I, what we always notice it's so funny because we have so many people that will come to the product because of digestive issues, and uh -huh. then they'll say, you know what, I I'm, I have more energy now, or like I'm sleeping better because mm. you know they're getting they're going to the bathroom more regular, they're getting rid of toxins. Toxins. They're getting rid of all of the yucky stuff and they're just, you know, it, it's, it's amazing what, how, when you start to clean yourself out, you just feel so much better and you it changes your mood. And like we said, mm. serotonin, our happy hormones produced in our gut, 90% of it. So if you have imbalance going on in your gut, you're not producing the serotonin optimally. So we really, you know, see a lot of people come to us that say like, my gosh, I'm in a better mood. I'm sleeping better, uh, better weight management. Even we see that because of course, it's your microbes that are dictating if you're one of those people that like looks at a cupcake and gains 10 pounds or one of those people that eats three cupcakes and doesn't gain any weight. It's, it's mm. your, not that I ever, you know, am a proponent of eating cupcakes, but you know, <laughs> we all know that people do. So, um, so I just think it's, you're going to see like, there's so many, like I always say like the magic starts to happen. A lot of times mm. people will notice a difference within the first couple of weeks when it's like, just digestive issues. Um, but it's after the like two or three months when you start to notice the 90 day mark, you know, when you start to see the magic start happening, better mood, um, better sleep. It's just, it's so fun to see people feeling better and, um, and being in a better mood. I it's to me, like just the mechanism of, like you said, detoxifying, having a proper bowel movement and that changing your mentality, changing the way your, your toxicity is relieved. So it doesn't go into the bloodstream and up into the neurological area, which people out there, uh, probably understand when you don't have a good bowel movement. Um, like if I don't have a good bowel movement today, I am very upset and very, you know, I yeah. feel crummy inside. And I think that we're seeing that in our, our day and age, like we're seeing more and more people who think it's okay not to have a bowel move for two or three days. Yeah. And that's all due to different things that are happening in our environment. And I, I love this talk about how probiotics change, like clean up the weeds. Does probiotics have a good effect on the body to clean up like, you know, like the pesticides and stuff and things like that in some like metals and stuff. Can, can yeah. is there any research on that? Yeah, one we did do a, a research study on the pesticides um, and mm -hmm. showing that it's actually helping, you know, we're helping because what the pesticides are doing are destroying the gut flora. And mm -hmm. so we know that the spores could go in there and help rebuild that flora. And, mm -hmm. and one of the things I always like to tell people why I'm so passionate about this product is like, we're going to be faced with offenders all the mm -hmm. time. We're, we are as a society, you know, we have antibacterial hand sanitizers, antibacterial hand soaps, we've got antibiotics in our food supply, we have pesticides all over our food supply. So my goal, and what I really would love for everybody to focus on is resilience. Build a gut that's resilient. Build a mm -hmm. gut that could handle those things better than somebody else's can. And so we really want to make sure that we're focused on resilience because when you have this healthy, mm -hmm. diverse, lush microbiome, it maybe it will be able to face the or you know it'll be able to address those offenders that you're faced with um, in in the world that we live in. Oh, I love when you say like it's multi diverse. I, I was I remember one of my colleagues sent me um, a a study where they were talking about individuals who were li lived in certain parts of the world uh, compared to America had quite a bit of mul multi diversity in their gut flora and they had lower reports. Of course we have like more pesticides here in our culture, but they were saying even lower rates of heart disease and they didn't get hardly get as much gut infections like, like, you know, E. Coli or H. Pylori, but those individuals, some of them didn't live in the cleanest environments, but they said that they had such a diverse microbiome that it defended them. So people having this diversity, it's a good way to like increase their, their immune system to fight off infections and, and it helps a healthier society. Absolutely. Because remember, 70 to 80% of our immune system is found in our gut lining. So we wow. really need to be focusing on creating a diverse, when we have a diverse 
healthy, lush microbiome, we have health. I mean, that is undisputed by any gut expert out there. We know and that we need a diverse, healthy microbiome. And that's what's so key about the spores is they have the ability to create that diversity. It's going and taking our own gut flora and helping it come back to life, if you will. And we're creating this healthy ecosystem in our gut. And that's what's so key. And, you know, we, we think of a lot of times people will be like, oh, I want to take that probiotics because I'm supposed to, I know I'm supposed to have have 50, um, a diverse microbiome. So they want the one with 15 different strains or 20 different strains. Mm -hmm. That's not doing anything. It's like throwing a penny in a pool that's filled with quarters. You know, you throw a penny in there. It's, it's not, if you throw 15 pennies in there, it's not going to make a difference, you know, but that's, what's so different is that these spores are going in there and helping bring that garden back to life and helping get rid of the overgrowth of the pathogenic bacteria. So it, it's really, really important that you focus on creating a diverse microbiome and, and spores are a really great tool in doing it, but there are other things that you could do. You know, you could, you know, eat a diverse group of foods. I always recommend people eating a diverse group of foods as a society. We eat about 15 to 16 type of foods a year. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. that's it about on average, Americans are eating 15 to 16, maybe 15 to 20 different types of foods a year. Whereas, you know, we used to, as a, our ancestors used to eat 300 different types of foods and, mm. you know, roots and tubers and, you know, different fruits and vegetables. And we're just not doing that as a society. So I always recommend trying a new vegetable or new fruit or something going to, you know, different grocery stores, like ethnic grocery stores and mm. having, trying different things like that to create more diversity in your diet. And then as well as, you know, taking a probiotic that helps support that diversity. That's, mm. that's a very mm. heavy, the hammer, you know, the probiotic, the spore based probiotic is a heavy hammer in that toolbox, but you should be doing other things as well by creating more diversity by eating a diverse diet. Mm, I, I love that you, you talked about the ethnic store because my mom's Korean mm -hmm. and uh, we were eating kimchi when I was like uh, very, very young. Um, yes. And we, we naturally drank bone broth, you know, soups. And that was normal for us, yep. you know. And when people talked about kimchi, some people love the smell. Some people don't like it. That's the honest truth. You know, you have Korean. I'm like, hey, I'll eat kimchi all day. Yeah. Um, and it was really amazing to me that my mom would always tell me this, Tina, she would always say that there were certain foods that are always good for her blood. And she'd always have like a certain type of kimchi. This was, this was cool. She'd have these big vats at her farmland out in Korea. And they had this stuff called gochujang and gochujang was red bean paste. And they would literally ferment that and they would put that into the kimchi. And so they would literally go out on my, my relatives farms and they take the top of these big vats out where they've been sitting and they have a healthy type of mold layer on top and they'd scrape it off, throw it away and let it sit. And my mom would say that each type of kimchi was meant for helping the body like in certain ways. It'd be like this one's been fermented this long. This will help with this and this will help with that. And I was like, you know, when I was a kid, Tina, I'm like, yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> right. But they always talked about it increased their immune. So when you say diverse, like, you know, diet, you know, cause we'd have like cucumber kimchi and cabbage kimchi and all these different types of uh, pickled vegetables. Now, I think that's what's cool about like the products you guys have created Just Thrive. Can you explain to us like you have like a probiotics that have like antioxidants or you have probiotics that have different types of uh, minerals and vitamins involved. Now, does that help because it, your body needs the diversity like with the probiotic to help the body in a certain way when you add in a couple few things? Yeah. So our flagship product is our Just Thrive probiotic and antioxidant. So the one strain in there is Bacillus Indicus HU36, and that mm. is an antioxidant producing strain, which is amazing. I mean, it actually produces zeaxanthin, astaxanthin, all these incredible antioxidants are being produced in the intestine. So mm. they're really, so in fact, the researchers on that leaky gut study actually felt that that strain was so key, the HU36 strain, because it actually helped combat that oxidative stress. So foundationally, I would recommend the, the, the probiotic that is just our flagship product, the probiotic and antioxidant. Um, and then we other, the other products we have is the other probiotic strain we have is something that I referred to before is the psychobiotic and the psychobiotic strain actually is a 
friendly bacteria that actually helps support that gut brain access. So it's, and it's also helping us with external stressors. So mm -hmm. it's this, this strain has eight clinical trials behind it showing that it's actually helping you deal with stress better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. helping you able to like control your cortisol levels, um, putting you more in that flow state. So really profound studies on that strain as well. And then a whole bunch of our other products. We don't have other probiotic strains in our other products. We have different gut supporting products. So we have an IgG supplement, which is immunoglobulin G. And, and I never want to overwhelm everyone. We have health coaches on the team and we, you know, mm -hmm. product coaches, if people have any other questions. But foundationally, I always recommend people you know, in your health, you have to start with a probiotic, a spore-based probiotic, because that's going to make the biggest, you know, biggest bang for your buck. Everybody wants to start with the Just Calm product, which is the psychobiotic strain, because everybody's so stressed out. And that's fine. You could start with both of those. I always recommend maybe starting with the probiotic first after a couple of weeks and then introducing it, because you always want to kind of see what is making the difference for you. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, you know, definitely recommend th those are two of our top products. And then of course our prebiotic, which is the, the prebiotic is the fertilizer for that garden. And so some prebiotics and, you know, it's basically going in and feeding the beneficial plants in the garden. Some prebiotics actually have, could actually feed the weeds, which we don't want them to do. And that's why we were very careful about what um, ingredients we chose for our prebiotic, but mm -hmm. foundationally, I would always suggest that people start with the probiotic because that's where you, um, you know, that's where you need to start with health, but then empower yourself, you know, learn more about the different products, talk to our product coaches if you have questions, but, um, yeah, usually I say start with the probiotic. Uh, that, that's so great because I do appreciate, and I'm so thankful for like the research that you do show in your products and, and that's you make available because, you know, Everybody out there, when you when you study like like a prebiotic, like you necessarily the food for the probiotic, and one of the things I really appreciate about the information you give is that you talk about like not only the need for the probiotic, but how probiotics basically help our bodies with like the normal life processes. Mm -hmm. Like one thing I really appreciate is like when you look at somebody that says, oh, they have a B twelve in here, or they have a certain type of B vitamin, they have a certain type of folate, and I think that you know, in, in the uh, study of like biochemistry and guys, everybody out there, I'm not trying to get too nerdy. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. but you know, when you talk about like the liver's ability to detoxify, or you talk about your arteries ability to actually stay pliable and stay soft. And, you know, we kind of have this, we attribute it always just to like a straight vitamin or straight mineral, but there's plenty of research that you show that the microbiome is responsible many times for like uh, allowing our bodies to assimilate Yes. Uh, many of these nutrients, right? Like that, like our bodies may not even have the ability to like absorb a vitamin B of some sort. Is, is that going that along is those lines? Such a great point. And I'm so glad you brought that up. But it's like, if our gut is inflamed, which unfortunately in the world we live in and all of the offenders to our gut, most of our guts are inflamed and we are, we have difficulties absorbing those nutrients and assimilating mm. those nutrients. And so, you know, that's why I feel so passionate that this is where your, your gut health is foundational for your health, because mm. you could be eating super clean and really healthy foods and nutrient dense foods. But if your gut is inflamed at all, it's not really absorbing the nutrients that we need to and mm. and assimilating all of the nutrients. So that is such a great point. And I'm glad you brought it up because I do talk about that all the time, but I forgot to mention that. Oh, I, I love it because when we talk about inflammation and patterns, because um, one of the or two of the supplements that really worked really, really well for the patients that came into the office were for the mood support. I mean, they all worked well, but that one, the patients really absorbed it. And what I did find was that the patients that had chronically uh, weak livers, and that's what we call the liver stagnation, Chinese medicine just means that their liver was not strong enough to take the nutrients. And then if you added a few things with the probiotics and to put them all in there, their, their liver thanked me for it. Like their pulses, mm -hmm. they call it the pulse points in Chinese medicine. If you're listening and you can put your hand on the pulse patterns on the wrist of a person and find out if the blood flow to that particular organ is sufficient, soft, supple. And you could find that the liver part of the pulse was very hard and wired. And then you put the, uh, put the person on the probiotic and that thing would even right out. So you know that the body's like getting nourished by the probiotic and there's that symbiotic relationship. So uh, when you can use um, another organism to help 
bring life and vitality to the body, Tina. I, I'm really impressed with that because, you know, because we I use herbs. I mean, I love herbs. I mean, that's what I do. It's, it's, my, it's, my, it's yeah. my baby. But we know that herbs can be like irritants. And I'll say that negatively. It's like they're there to kill off infections. But um, one of the best things about your research that shows that you need to use na- the nature's, you know, this God-given entity that you're supposed to assimilate with as an adjunct to your health. So we just lost it though, right? We've lost it because of all the things that are going on in our world today. Yeah. Um, and so that's one thing I appreciate because I was reading a report, Tina, about like the effects of water, like how bad some water is on our biome and how it kills off a lot of the yeah. bacteria. Yeah. I, I'm just getting alarmed with it, like how bad it has become in our culture and not to be sound negative or down, but um, having your products and having good probiotics in general can be such a healing factor. Now, uh, guys, uh, when I talk about probiotics, I don't know about, about you guys, but I've seen like life changing things here in the office with people who've had good probiotics. Now, when people come to you, Tina, and they say, OK, um, with your products, do you think it could help? you know, this, this, or this, but would it, I want to make sure I have this, uh, this question, right. For everybody that's listening is probiotics, probably the biggest thing that a person probably should do for their health. Like is the, is it the biggest advocate for their health? Like if you had to make one suggestion for somebody to start, like, you know, they've come up and say, what can I do for my health? Would this be your first step? Hands down. Yes. You know, like I'm a huge fan of like vitamin D and other, you know, type of nutrients. But again, if your gut is not optimal, it's not absorbing those nutrients optimally. Mm. So I feel so adamant. And and now we know the gut is responsible for virtually every aspect of our overall health from rheumatoid arthritis to, you know, cancer to diabetes and, you know, autoimmune issues. I mean, it's your gut that's responsible for whether you get those types of diseases. And it's there are not to say that there are not other factors, but we do know that it's the you know, pounding on the gut that's really causing so much the imbalance and is really the the original source of most disease out there. So, um, yes, I would say foundationally, you need to start with a, a spore based probiotic and one that's been researched. Oh, I love the way you say like with research, because I could tell when we talk that, you know, you could tell the lawyers coming out and, you and you're like, <laughs> this doesn't even have anything behind it. And <laughs> And I'm like, you want to prove it to me? And I'm, <laughs> you know, you know, I'm staying out of love. Um, oh, gosh, the, I don't like when the tell. lawyer side of me comes out. <laughs> uh, truly, truly. My, my dad was a drill. That's, I love the passion because <laughs> my dad was a drill sergeant. And my dad used to tell me this. He used to say, hey, talk is cheap. Prove yeah. it. And, yeah. I, and I agree. I mean, like, and I think that's what I love about the, the science behind what you're doing. So is there any testing that you would suggest that somebody does for people listening saying, do I need a probiotic? Like, uh, you know, not, I'm not a person that just goes by symptoms, but I need mm-hmm. some kind of physical evidence. What would you suggest? Well, I would just see based on your symptoms that you might have, you know, my, my other thing is, you know, you had mentioned all those different conditions out there, but remember like, we're all like people take a multivitamin all the time because they think, Oh, I'm, I just want to, it's like insurance for you. And mm-hmm. that's where mm-hmm. I feel like with a probiotic, that's why you start with a you know, we remember we talked about resilience. We want to be resilient. We want, we are going to be faced with pathogens. We live in this world that's so disruptive to our gut microbiome. And Mm -hmm. so my goal, you know, even if you have none of those symptoms, like you, I never had any digestive systems or digestive issues when we launched this company. And I take it every single day. My kids take it every day. My parents, my in-law, I mean, everyone in my family, because I want to be resilient for things that come my way. So when people, you know, if you have symptoms and you start taking it and seeing what kinds of improvements and journal it, you know, kind of be aware of it. And I will say sometimes when people start the product, they might start see something called die off, which is called the Herxheimer reaction. Mm-hmm. And that's basically the toxic byproducts of dead of the bacteria, of the toxic bacteria that will leave your body. And you might see some like gas or bloating, diarrhea, constipation. I always just say like, A, that's a good sign because we know that it's actually getting rid of that overgrowth of the pathogenic bacteria. So don't be afraid of it, but just go slower. And a lot of times we tell people just 
start out with one every other day, mm. or you could open the capsule and mix it with food. So you could do like half a capsule one day, half a capsule the other day, um, or but or you could go, you know, ev- like I said, every other day, and then slowly try t- t- trade up to one capsule a day. But it's it's literally the easiest thing to do. One capsule a day with food. We've actually studied it to know that they these strains work better in the presence of food. So they germinate throughout the intestines with the presence of food. So wow. um, that's wow. good to know too. But um, yeah. Um, you know, I, I definitely, we, we have a money back guarantee, you know, no, like 30 day money back 90. It's like a lifetime bottom of the bottle guarantee. I mean, we stand behind our product. Um, and we always, you know, we encourage people, but I understand that. I mean, I'm skeptical too, of a lot of things. So I certainly could appreciate somebody being skeptical of things. So, you know, I always just give it a try. And if it doesn't work or if you don't like it and you don't see difference, then you certainly could, you know, apply the money back guarantee. I, I love that when you have the guarantee because there's only more things we could talk about. Are you just talking about taking it with food and being able to germinate while people are eating food? I mean, I, that's a whole other subject because I'm telling you what, like, I love going into that science nerd part. We may have to do like even more in another podcast where we can talk about a little bit more about like some extra additional questions. I know some people out there are going to ask. Um, so I know like there's one, there's one more. And I, and I ask you a few personal questions too, because we like to have our guests ask a few, you know, answer a few questions, okay. but for all those mothers out there, I want to say, is it safe for children? Is it safe for a little one that has these type of conditions? Yes. So we always tell, you know, moms to ask their doctor if they could give it to like a newborn. But I mean, these are so incredibly beneficial to children. And as a mother of three, I am very passionate about this topic too. The rise of allergies and um, eczema and, you know, all types of autoimmune issues in children. It is epidemic levels, ADHD, you know, other brain health issues with children is at epidemic levels. When I was a young girl, I didn't know anybody that had a peanut allergy, or I knew one child, one classmate that had a peanut allergy all the way through high school. Mm. Now we know that, you know, you can't go to a restaurant with them without them asking you if people have any allergies. So it is, it, I just feel like children of need to be taking this more than ever because they were brought up in this world with pesticide laden food. And oh, so yeah. I would definitely recommend it for kids. We have a gummy version as well. Um, but yeah, and like I said, you could open the capsules and mix it with food and kids won't even, I used to put it in my son's piping hot oatmeal and it, you would never, it's, it, we know we've tested this, that you could bake with these and they will survive the presence of what? heat. They would survive the presence of an antibiotic. Most probiotics would be killed by the presence of yeah. an antibiotic. These actually survive the presence of an antibiotic. So if you know you have to be on one, which is so disruptive to your gut, no, you could take the spores and they could actually, they will survive um, that presence of the antibiotic and will help rebuild alongside and assist the pro- antibiotic. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. We got to have one a ser- t- a time where we talk about like kids and probiotics, yeah. because I know that people out there listening, like we want to hear more about the kids and what it can do and what it can help with. So, um, I'll talk to my, um, my producer and we're going to talk about that. Like talk, let's have one about, you know, children yes. as well. Uh, and that would, that floors me when you talk about it withstanding heat, because, uh, there's so much talk about like, you know, I can't keep my probiotics out. And if they are standing out here, then they're all going to die off, you know? Yeah. So thank you for joining us today. And I want everybody out there to know that you need to research just thrive. They have great research. They have great peer reviewed articles. They have journals that back up what they talk about. Um, and we want to go to a personal side with Tina. I want to ask you, okay, mm-hmm. Tina, what is like your favorite health hack for this year? Is that the word to use hack? I don't want to say hack, but what is your favorite thing mm-hmm. that you're researching this year in health? Yeah. Well, like a health hack that I use is basic. I, I love to walk after meals. That's my biggest thing is I'm really pretty religious about it. I intermittent mm-hmm. fast, which is also another great tool for um, a lot. There's a lot of research on intermittent fasting with for health of your gut flora, but mm-hmm. I eat, you know, usually two meals a day and I try to walk after each of those meals. I think that's super important to like for your metabolic function. And so I really try to get active. I mean, even if it's, you know, 10 minutes. I usually walk much longer than that, but even if you go 10 minutes, that's just super helpful for you. So I think, um, I've been doing that a lot lately. Hmm. Yeah. I love intermittent fasting. And it's like the, the, they always say in the Chinese medicine world, like when you walk, you're increasing the stomach chi and the, the intestinal chi as you take a walk to help digest your food. So great, great advice. And we want to ask like for you and like for just thrive, what are, what's new in, in 2024 and going in into 2025? Are there some new things that's on the horizon? What are the new things that are happening in your life? 
Mm, well, a lot of new things happened in 2024 in my life. I became a grandmother. So my well, daughter congrats. had her first child and I became a grandmother. My husband and I both became grandparents and to a beautiful little grandson. And so that's what's been new for me in 2024. Um, and, and we do have some new products that are, we have a new product that's coming out the beginning of 2025, but it's still kind of under wraps, but we're excited about that. We only bring products that are researched and missing in the market. And we are very, very adamant about not bringing me too products. Um, you know, I love vitamin C, but we wouldn't launch a vitamin C because there's so many great companies that are doing vitamin C, but we only bring products that are missing and um, researched and needed in the market. So we do have mm -hmm. something new and exciting, but in the meantime, I'm having so much fun with my grandson. I love it. I love it. And we're really thankful, Tina, that you came on today. And uh, I want everybody out there, if you have any doubts, please research it. You can always contact us here as well. You can drop us a comment here at the Ancient Health Podcast. And I want to let you know that um, there's a limited time. You can save 20% off a 90-day bottle of Just Thrive Probiotic or Just Calm at JustThriveHealth.com. Promo code Dr. Motley. In all capital letters, you know, my name, not is D-R-M-O-T-L-E-Y. So if you guys want to try this, which I think you should, please go over, check it out, put my discount code in there, and I'm pretty certain that you're going to get the benefits that you want from this. Um, from all of us here at Ancient Health Podcast, we just want to say thank you, Tina, for joining us today. We're really appreciative of this and the great info you gave us. Thank you, Dr. Motley. I really appreciate it. And thank you to all who took the time to listen today. Oh, thank you. Okay, everybody, we just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys liked the information on this podcast, please, you know, just drop us a comment, like and subscribe. And we really appreciate all the comments and, and uh, questions because we like to make more content and more podcasts for anything that you guys may have in your head. So until next time, we hope you have a great day. Take it easy. Thank you. Thank you.